Good afternoon, happy Wednesday. It's the Cellar Chats here at the Second Glass. We're talking weekly wine flights. We're talking wine, it's made from grapes, it tastes good. And we're off to Italy because I just can't get enough of it. Um, and this week we're, we're kind of diving into some more refreshing, vibrant styles of wine from the lovely, lovely Italian peninsula, which is very fitting considering it is exceptionally hot outside. I mean, it's not terribly uncomfortable, but it's pretty warm today. It's sunny, it's kind of humid, considering the fact that I think two days ago it was like 60 degrees in the morning, and today it's like 88 and, you know, 80% humidity. The air quality is terrible. I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not struggling air quality-wise like they are up north with all the smoke from the uh, wildfires, but nonetheless, our air is not great. But I digress. Like I said, we're off to Italy, and we're going to kick it off with a really, really fun wine um, and something that's sort of is very new to the market in general, which is Prosecco Rosé. Um, we're going to roll from there into the ever classic Sartorelli, their Verdicchio de Castelli di Esi, their Trilidio. Um, and then off to Piedmont to one of my favorite grape varieties, Barbera di Asti from the Pico Macario winery. Um, yeah. It's gonna be fun. They're gonna taste great. So what are you doing? Stop watching this video. Come, come, come have some flights. Or maybe you're already here and you're watching the video while you're having the flights. That's what I'm hoping for. That's 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 the goal. But regardless, let's pop into some prosecco because who doesn't love a little bubbly? Um, as many of you probably are aware, prosecco uh, is a region. It, it's it also was once referred to as a grape, but they changed the grape name. We won't get into that too much. It's a whole thing. It's very confusing. But nonetheless, Prosecco is a region in the Veneto, in the northern Italy, the northern, in northern Italy. And as of the 2021 harvest, they have, the DOC has allowed the production of Rosé Prosecco. So previously to that vintage, you could make Rosé but you could not label it as Prosecco and it would not qualify for DOC level status. Um, and just quick overview, like DOC level status, that's the, the governing body of Italy, basically like AOCs or things of that nature in France. Um, looks like this, it's that little, little tape around the thing. And these go DOC, DOCG, there's IGT, there's all kinds of different levels, but the highest level is DOCG. DOC is kind of like, the standard bearer for great quality. Um, but prior to 2021, you could not bottle a Prosecco as a rosé. But in 2021, they officially changed the rules so that you could do this, um, which is really amazing because there is a history of making rosé in this area, um, but they just weren't allowed to, to sell it, which is a bit of a shame. So it's always exciting to have something very new. Um, this is so pretty. So this is Sorgente, um, really, really fun project. Um, they're actually based in the Friuli portion of, of Prosecco. So something that a lot of people really don't know is that Prosecco actually, the Prosecco region straddles two specific regions of Italy. There are 20, 20, 20, 20 regions in Italy. I really should know that. Um, anyways, most of Prosecco is in the Veneto, but there is a small slice. So the Veneto kind of sits here. Yes, Venice is located in the Veneto. And then Friuli sits above it. And a little corner of the top area of the Prosecco region just dumps on over to the Friuli side. These guys are located in the Friuli side. So this is mostly Glera with a little bit of Pinot Noir. Um, Pinot Noir is pretty, is grown pretty widely throughout this throughout Northern Italy. Um, it is not an indigenous or a native grape by any means, but there is a long tradition of Pinot Noir being grown here. Um, wow, man, this one, it's so pretty. It is like wild strawberry, slightly like white raspberry notes, a little bit of citrus, really minerally. Um, this is an extra brute Prosecco and it is all one vintage, all from 2021 vintage. Really clean, fresh. Mm. I mean, wow. It is all the things you look for in rosé. I'm sorry. All the things you look for in Prosecco. It's fruity. It's easygoing. Soft little bubbles. 
but then you have that like little addition of Pinot, Pinot Noir or Pinot Nero as they, as they call it here, which gives you a pop of red fruit, a little more texture, a little more vibrancy. It is such a fun, fun drink for the summertime um, and for weather like this. I'm so excited that we're showcasing at this, at, you know, tonight and this week. And again, look at that label. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to drink this? Who doesn't want to drink this wine? It's delicious. You want to drink this wine. Again, that's Sorgente Prosecco Rosé um, from Northern Italy. Oh, wow. I can really go for like a cheese and meat board right now. I know that's usually my go-to for things, but let's be honest, who doesn't want that when they're having wines? All right. Moving from Friuli Veneto, Northern Italy, we're going to head a little bit south to the Marche region. And this is Sartorelli. So Sartorelli, um, these guys established their winery in the 70s, um, but the family has a long history there. And the whole premise of the project is focused exclusively on one grape variety, and that is Verdicchio. Um, widely regarded as, you know, amongst Italian professionals as one of the most overlooked high quality white wine grapes of Italy. It is capable of producing really complex, really beautiful wines, um, but it also can make really basic and simple wines. Um, and that's not like a knock on those. That's not a bad thing. Again, I've said this before, which is for whatever reason in the US, we tend to look at things as like either it's basic and simple, which is negative, or it's the best. And we always want the best. But the reality is, is that majority of the time you're not enjoying the best and not every occasion calls for the best. So things that are just delicious and easy going, sometimes those are the best thing. Anyways, I, I, off my soapbox here. So this is 100% Verdicchio from Verdicchio um, de Castelli di Yezi. So there are two, two specific areas of um, the Marques um, that are DOC level for uh, Verdicchio. You have um, Verdicchio de Castelli di Yezi, and then you have Verdicchio, I'm sorry, can't remember the other one. It's Verdicchio de Castelli or Verdicchio de. I might be getting that region wrong. Please correct me if I am. I'm sure I am. And essentially, Metallica is more um, mountain grown. It's a little bit higher elevation. It's a little further from the sea. De Yezi is a little bit closer to the sea. Um, historically, or not so historically, stylistically, you get a little more mineral, a little more brightness and freshness in the Metallica. Um, in the Diezi wines, you have a little more broad texture, a little more ripeness. Um, the Trilivio bottling from Sartorelli is kind of their mid -tier. Okay, I think I'm back. I'm back. Sorry, having a little, like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's some solar flares messing with our satellites. The signal got a little funny there. But uh, as I was saying, I noticed it before I even finished my comment. There's a flavor profile to Verdicchio that I really love. It's, it always has a little bit of citrus characteristics, you know, that sea spray. Um, again, we are near the ocean here in the Marque. Um, but when you get the more complex and more, you know, age-worthy ones, they get this marzipan almond characteristic and a little bit of like subtle herbaceousness that adds complexity that just makes these wines so lovely to drink and so excellent with food. Mm. Wow. On the nose, definitely marzipan, beautiful texture. On the palate, it feels a little bit more kind of like almond slivers. Like if you're having like a really delicious, I would call it like an almond croissant. There's like almost like an almond croissant kind of characteristic to it. It's not buttery like a croissant, but that intense almond character, it stands out and it is so tasty. Mm. Love, 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 love. Oh, oh, we're back. We're back. So I'm going to try and wrap this up pretty quickly because clearly we're having some signal issues. He keeps telling me, oh, you should move to a better place. I film from the same location every week, and this is the first week I've had legitimate problems. Um, again, that is the Sartorelli Verdicchio Trilivio. That is our middle wine for the flights this week. Rounding out with one of my all-time favorite grapes, Barbera from the from Osti and Piedmont. 
This is Pico Macario. The thing I love about Barbera is it's fruity, it's easy drinking, it's got great acidity, it's got great freshness, and that just telltale Italian kind of rusticity that just draws me in every time. It is perfect for summer. I like it with a chill. I like it with pizza. I like it with seafood. I like it with everything. Put it with steak. I don't care. Be I think we're back. Okay, quickly, Pico Macario, the Barbaric is delicious. I've already 